Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. If you're watching and wondering what happened to last week's video, you are correct. It didn't happen because I'd recorded the video and my SD card reader, my loyal SD card reader of many years, failed to read. However, the content of that video were about what I picked up at a car boot sale and this was one of those things. I picked this up for 50p and I believe it to be a cheetah joystick interface for a ZX Spectrum and unfortunately I won't be able to even test that because my ZX Spectrum is currently kaput. However, I don't think that should stop us from having a little look inside this and there is a little bit of damage that we might be able to actually fix. First things first, I think we should take the lid off and have a look inside. Now I have noticed on a lot of ZX Spectrum enclosures like this, they do tend to have this slot at the back and I think that's because they reuse them so that there would be maybe an edge connector on the back so that you could have uh, a device that had a through. So if, you, uh, if you're a connoisseur of these things, please write down below if you recognize this enclosure and if it was a standard one that all the companies used or if this was a cheetah specific. Now these screws look like, <laughs> it wasn't like wood screws rather than machine screws, but we'll tell when the tip comes out. Uh, yes, like a wood screw. <laughs> Just for banging in your chipboard. Your M MFI, who remembers those? MFI, Texas um, Home Store. No, was it called Texas Home? Texas something. Home Base and B&Q, all the best. Right, so the first things I've noticed is this rather shiftily glued on standoff, which I really like. This is the kind of stuff you find. <laughs> Nobody thought that it would need one when you're plugging in your joystick, but then they discovered that the old PCB was flopping around a little bit too much. In fact, look, I'm pushing just gently with my finger and you can see that's what that's there to prevent. Um, and I suspect, I mean, it should have really engaged with these uh, features here on the plastic there to stop the PCB from flexing, but maybe the PCBs are just too small. And, well, we'll know once we take it out. Let's have a little go, shall we? Yeah, I think there's not a reliable amount of interference there. In fact, you can see it's reliably not enough. Um, interesting PCB. You can see it is uh, E80, apparently, material, and give it a smith. Mmm, smells like the 80s. Single-sided, of course. Very simple. And uh, let's see if we can figure out what this is doing. And looking at my phone, it's pretty much a copy of the Kempston joystick interface. You have these octal buffer here and a couple of OR gates on this chip. And they're weaving some sort of magic um, to these data lines here on the spectrum. And you can see you've got your joystick interface here and you've got all of these pull up resistors. You've got them right there. There's a whole row of them. Four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like nine. I don't know whatever there's nine there there's eight here same sort of thing right um and clearly it's tugging on these address lines and if i'm not mistaken those actually are also uh, connected to the keyboard um multiplexer so i think these have the equivalent of uh, twiddling some some buttons on the, the zx spectrum keyboard and i think it was numbers if i'm not not mistaken. Now, something else I noticed that was interesting when I was eyeballing this is, again, more of those bits of uh, nylon just shoved in there because clearly there's actually acting as a spacer because this uh, needs to stick out more apparently because it has to stick out quite far to go into the spectrum. So they obviously use that as a spacer. They actually bent over some pins here in the construction to make sure it couldn't um, pull back out while they were soldering it. But someone has been a little bit rough with it and they've actually cracked the PCB there. Now this is a heavily um, glass filled plastic. So the downside with that, in my experience, is that it's very difficult to glue. Uh, you, you certainly could try um, and it might work for a bit, but I don't know if it's worth bothering with ultimately. I think that's really um, what I'm gonna go with. Because in trying to glue this, the likelihood is your adhesive is gonna go in there and uh, get stuck to those pins, possibly wick themselves along to the ends of the pins and make the pins unreliable. And then you're going to go in and try to scrape those pins and those pins will break. So just leave it alone because you can see when you wiggle it here, see how those pins don't move at all. So they are actually absolutely fine and dandy. So the likelihood is when you plug this in, you're going to be able to uh, use this if you, 
if you really care that much. Now looking at the parts on this, if you wanted to replicate this yourself, I mean, here you go, I'm gonna hold the circuit up for you. It's nice and simple. Take your screenshot now, snip. That's it, you've uh, basically got everything you need right there, nicely hand-drawn probably, um, tells you everything, literally everything you need to, to do to, to make this. Um, again, look at this, look at the orientation of these components, you've made it yourself. Now, in terms of the cost of the components, I suspect the costliest parts are gonna be these uh, interfaces, these are the interfaces, I guess that's the correct terminology, but connectors. Um, because connectors are expensive. Um, any I.O. is expensive, but the chips are virtually free. I, I should expect that you will pay no more than, should we say three pounds for those two chips combined? Hopefully, if you're doing it right, have a look on the old DigiKey of the RS and see if you can find them. And let's see if this will go back in. In terms of the enclosure, of course, I think 3D print something. And I uh, asked that question earlier about enclosures, but I wonder if anybody has gone on to any of the Thingiverse or anything like that and made a standard ZX Spectrum project case, which would be absolutely fantastic. Because you could come up with a standard edge connector, all of that jazz, and then some a little bit of PCB, which is a bit like variable with you know, nice tracks that go up and down. Uh, enough for your own little projects and you can wire it all together and that would be absolutely groovy and then if you were super smart and super duper clever you could make a, a, enough space for a Raspberry Pi W or the SP32 and then you could add a really cool Wi-Fi to serial uh, adaptation going on or have it as a multi interface that can do uh, use the Bluetooth from the ESP modules, you could use a wireless controller perhaps, or transmit data to Spectrum. All of those things become uh, accessible if you're so inclined to support <laughs> ZX Spectrum, which, as like I said at the moment, my one is dead. If you know how to fix a dead ZX Spectrum that is now booting up into a weird black corrupt screen of sadness, please let me know. I do have a TI-90... TI-99, 98, I can't even remember. I've got a couple of those that are dead. Please, again, if you're an expert in those, let me know because I need to sort them out. Otherwise, we're not gonna be getting any more computer projects for a while because I'm running out of computers that are alive. Anyway, let me know if this was worth the 50p and thank you so much for watching. Mwah!